So if you're thinking of updating to macOS 14 Sonoma or have possibly updated your device, here are some of the basic, nothing fancy settings that you might want to consider in order to enhance your user experience. If we go into our system preferences here and go to where it says wallpaper, you can see that with macOS 14 Sonoma, not only do we have the macOS 14 graphic here, but we have a ton of of new wallpapers and these ones that you see here are graphics and slow motion so for example if we were to select any from the landscape here or cityscape or underwater or even the earth section or if you have downloaded most of them here if you select where it says shuffle areas you'll be able to see these come to life so for example we select los angeles here and to see it becoming live we have to lock our devices so i'm going to press the power button on my mac just so that we are able to lock this and then you see it so you can see it here the traffic has started to move and on my main display or on my built-in monitor this is actually showing the time and at the same time it's showing my profile and then when i unlock my device using touch id or if i was to type in my password the wallpaper slowly comes to a full stop so let's do that so that you can see and as you can see in the background all the cars have slowed down and stopped so this is all slow motion live wallpapers for all these that you can select and do keep in mind that if you update for the first time you are going to have to download most of these i think for example if i was to go to nile delta you can see this has started to download in the background right there on top so that is an amazing new settings that you want to change with your wallpaper. If we go into settings and then go to general and go to the section that says airdrop and handoff, you want to allow or turn on this section. So if yours, yours says no one, and make sure that that is set to contacts or if you want you can also send it to everyone but i would recommend putting this settings to where it says contacts only and with macOS 14 sonoma now airdrop continues to send if you were to go out of the airdrop range from your receiver over wi-fi or connectivity that you might be using if it's tethering or hotspot so for this to work both the sender that is yourself and the receiver the person that you are sending to need to be signed into their apple id and then the airdrop will continue to work in the background so i do recommend you keep handoff also turned on as most of mac os 14 features and ios 17 features will require this feature and then like i mentioned both the sender and receiver need to be signed into their apple id so go into your settings and go to your apple id and make sure that you are signed in in order to be able to utilize this newly updated handoff and airdrop updates if you go into your settings and go to where it says accessibility right there and go down you can see this section that says personal voice so if you click where it says personal voice you can see here you can share across devices and you can allow apps to use your personal voice and what this feature does is that it gives you on-screen prompts to be able to read and dictate and that way it learns your voice the whole process takes about 15 minutes so if you're at risk of losing your voice or you feel like you want to generate an ai based voice or a machine learned voice then you can enable this personal voice and you can also share this across all your devices we be it if it's a device that's on ios 17 or your apple watch if you enable this and also turn on this personal voice and allow personal voice on calls as well that replicated voice will be able to work on all your calls as well with mac os 14 sonoma there's a major update when it comes to widget so as you can see there I just put up my widget section and you can see here the first thing it tells you is that you can place widgets directly on the desktop and add iPhone connected widgets so you can see here you know I'm only seeing limited number of widgets so if you want you can click where it says edit widgets right there it pulls this menu up and you can see here you can extend this because it comes from the bottom up you can't really move this from 
from side to side you can only extend it upwards and then here you can see a library of all your widgets that you have now this allows you to be able to add your widgets to your home screen so i have a set of widgets that i'm looking at on my main device or main screen but if i wanted to add widgets on the secondary display as well i can do that by just dragging from there and then adding these widgets so this also allows you to be able to pull widgets from your iPhone. So for example, some of the widgets that aren't available on the Mac, since there is continuity between the iPhone on iOS 17 and the Mac on Mac OS 14, you can be able to pull your iPhone widgets, like for example, this Lucid Moda widget that isn't available on the Mac, but because I have the application or the widgets on the iPhone I can be able to pull it here and then if I give it some time it will load up and you can see my widget right there so this is something that's good and what's amazing about this feature is that if you click on the desktop right here you can see the widgets you know they are popping out but then if I was to click into a different application like the settings you can see the widgets sort of fade into the background so you can now change some settings when it comes to this so if you click where it says desktop and dock and then go to where it says widget style and if you click where it says automatic you can see there there is monochrome and monochrome is basically this that you are seeing where if you are in a different application other than the desktop the widgets sort of blend into the wallpaper if I was to switch this monochrome off by selecting full color you can see how the widgets turn out to be so irregardless of whether I click on the desktop or I'm in a different settings or application then the widgets will always pop out but the settings that I'm going to be keeping here is the one that is automatic where I'll allow the system to be able to choose by putting the widgets in monochrome mode when I'm not on the desktop. If you scroll down a little bit under the desktop and dock menu that we are in you can use iPhone widgets and if you have multiple iPhones connected to your Apple ID or updated to the latest software then under this section you can select from the settings the iphone that you want to be able to pull third party widgets and then you can always go into edit widgets and change the settings and select the widgets that you always want to add to your desktop be it your primary or main display or your secondary display like what you're seeing here on my device if we go into our system preferences and go to general and go where it says software update I'll be happy to let you know that with Mac OS 14 Sonoma going forward we now have the ability to select whether we want to receive public beta developer beta or just regular updates so if we click here where it says beta updates right there you can see here we have the option to select beta updates if you are enrolled into the developer beta for operating systems it's now free you can download Mac OS 14 Sonoma using a developer beta for free you can be able to change that setting here by selecting the developer beta or if you want to receive just regular updates when this update comes out officially to the public you can select the option that says off there and if you are in the public beta as well using your apple id you can also select the public beta version so this is something that's now changed apple is now using your apple id that's on your device to be able to give you developer beta or public beta or to give you just regular updates depending on the setting that you select here i did do a video that tells you how you can get mac os 14 sonoma for free using this new free updated method from apple so look up somewhere here or i'll leave it in the description of this video if we open up safari on our device here and go into the safari settings you can see here we have an updated section when it comes to privacy so here there is this section that says private browsing require touch id to view locked tabs so this has also given you the ability to manage website data that you can be able to even go further to protect or clear and to show you this in action if we were to go into the file section here on safari and 
click where it says new private window so we can open that and then you can see here it will tell you that you are now in the private browsing section and then here also it shows private and it says safari is designed with privacy in mind by preventing tracking by default private browsing adds additional privacy to protect protections for all tabs in this window after you close this window safari won't remember the pages you visited your search history and your autofill information and also if you were to visit any website and share a link to someone this section automatically removes the tracking tag id that will be associated or attached in that link if you are in this private mode and also any autofills and passwords that you fill on third party sites will be automatically cleared when you exit this private browsing section if we go into our system settings right here and go to where it says series and spotlight search you can see here if we click where it says Siri you now have the prompt or the ability to uh, just keep it as is as what we are used to by saying hey and then the phrase like you are seeing right there or if you want you can select this section that says Siri or hey and then uh -huh. you know the phrase so if you have updated your Mac to Mac OS 14 by just saying Siri, hopefully I won't trigger your devices, but this is a change that you can go into your system preferences and be able to update where it shortens and eliminates the hey part before the voice activation feature. I don't want to trigger your devices. On Mac OS 14 Sonoma, there's a feature that you might want to be able to add to your dock or menu bar. And if you go into any application, can be from Apple or a third party app. For example, if we open up Safari and then go to YouTube, if we wanted to add this as a web app on our dock, we can go to this section that says share right there and here you can see we have multiple things that we can do or share it to and you can see here it says add to dock and if we click that section add to dock you can see an icon will be added to your dock and launchpad so you can quickly access this and it will sort of transform the way we can interact with this page and if we click add we'll just close this safari tab right here and if we open up the youtube you can see here it doesn't really tell you that it's a web page that has been added and if we open it right there you can see it's opening in the style of an application and right here you can see we are able to interact with it like it's a normal application because with mac os 14 it allows you to be able to create web apps with any sites and right here you can see that this is basically looking like uh, a real application you can see doesn't show that this is a tab or something that we extracted from safari so it's another plus for third party sites and for web apps we are back in safari and with safari there's a number of settings that we can actually change and update because well safari has been updated and first things first if we go to the about safari version you can see the version we have here is version 17.0 and you can see the associated build number so if we close this and go to where it says settings you can see here we have a setting that is for profiles so if you have multi people that use the same profile for the mac or the same account and you want to separate the browsing profiles you can go into your settings in safari and you can see we have profiles that allow you to keep your browsing separated and you might want to set up a profile for work or for school and your history cookies and websites will be separated from the rest of your browsing and you see here if you click where it says create profile it will ask you for a symbol that you want to create you can also choose a color that's associated with your profile or if you want you can use an existing folder and then you can create your own custom favorites and that is the same for you if you're going to be the second or third person that's going to be creating a profile if we go to where it says passwords i have to put my 
touch id right here on my password and under this section you can see there is security recommendations and then there's security options as well that we might want to change in our settings and with mac os 14 sonoma there's this newly updated section that has been added that says share passwords and pass keys this allows you to be able to share to people that you have in your iCloud family circle or you can choose someone out of that circle to be able to share your passwords and pass keys but if this is a setting that you're going to change and be able to share use it wisely under this section here in safari as well we have the developer menu that has been added so before you would have to go into this and then go a longer path but here you can see there's been added this developer settings under safari and you can see some of the automations and local file restrictions and also other advanced settings that you can enable using the settings under safari if we go into our system preferences and go to where it says screen time right there you can see under communication light there you have communication limits and you have communication safety if you click on communication safety you can see right there we have a newly updated section that says check for sensitive photos and this will allow your mac or your system to be able to alert you if it senses that you might be at risk or someone might be trying to send you photos or content that contains nudity and it will allow you to be able to be alerted first before you can view the content which is a pretty cool safety settings that we would like to turn on and we have improved communication safety as well that we might want to turn on for added protection now under the battery section right here you can see if you go to the options right here you have the option to optimize video streaming while on battery i think this was there before but it's a pretty cool feature that if you want to save more battery and you are playing an hdr video that will be automatically converted to sdr to try and save on the brightness and the consumption of your battery to give you a longer lasting battery life if you want that that is a setting that you can easily turn on so that's about it for me guys when it comes to some of the settings that you can change on mac os 14 sonoma these are a few out of a bunch of many more that could have been added let me know what you think about this video if you found it helpful in a way or informative definitely do leave a like or leave a thumbs up and stay safe and i'll see you in the next video peace